This is part 55 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss implementing edit view in ASP.NET Core MVC to edit existing employee data. Here is what we want to do. When this edit button is clicked, we want to redirect the user to an edit view that looks like this. We want to retrieve the respective employee details and display them on this form so the user can change the details that he wants to change and then once the update button is clicked we want to post this form back to the server and update the respective employee record in the underlying database table including the image. In this video, we'll implement this edit view and the edit action that responds to HTTP GET request. In our next video, we'll implement edit action that responds to HTTP POST request when we submit this form by clicking this update button. The first thing that we want to do right now is when this edit button is clicked, we want to redirect the user to the edit view. This list of employees are coming from our index view which is already open within Visual Studio. Here is our edit button. When this button is clicked, we want to redirect the user to the edit action within our home controller. To specify the name of the action method, we use ASP-Action Tag Helper. The name of the action is edit and it's going to be within our home controller. To specify the name of the controller, we use ASP-Controller Tag Helper. To the edit view, we also need to pass the ID of the employee that we are editing. For that, we are going to use ASP-Route-ID Tag Helper. We use this loop variable employee to get the ID of the employee. This is an index view which displays the list of employees. So naturally, the model for this view is an I enumerable of employee objects. So we are looping through all the employees that we have in the model and we are using this loop variable employee to get the ID of the employee that we are editing. We also have edit button in our details view. Notice when I click the view button to navigate to details view, on the details view, we have this edit button. When we click this, again, we want to go to edit action within our home controller. So the code is going to be very similar to what we already have in our index view. So I'm going to copy these three tag helpers, paste them in our details view, and then change the bits that are required. To get the ID of the employee, we are going to use the model object of this view, which is home details view model, as you can see from the IntelliSense. So on the model property, we have employee property, and on that, we have ID. Let's save these changes and take a look at the browser. Notice, now, when we reload this details view, we get an interesting error. Invalid operation exception cannot override the href attribute for an anchor element. So basically, it's saying if we have the href attribute specified, we cannot use these tag helpers, asp-action, asp-controller, etc. For these tag helpers to work, we need to get rid of this href attribute. Let's do the same in our index view as well. When we reload the page now, it works. But when we click this edit button, notice we have a 404. Why is that? That's because at the moment within our home controller, we don't have edit action. So let's include it. Here is the home controller. Our edit action is going to be somewhat similar to this create action. So let's make a copy of this and then change the bits that are required. The name of the action method is edit instead of create. Now we want to create a view model class that carries all the data this edit view needs. I'm going to place that view model class within this view models folder. Let's name this class employee edit view model. Now let's understand the data our edit view needs. It needs the name of the employee, email, department, and to display their existing photo, we need a property that can carry the existing photo path. In addition, if the user wants to change this existing photo with a new photo, they again need another field to upload a new photo. Now, if we take a look at employee create view model, notice it has most of the properties that we need, name, email, department, and photo. So the first four properties are already there in our employee create view model. In addition to these four properties, we need existing photo path property to display the existing photo. And we also need the ID of the employee. 
So in order not to duplicate code, what I'm going to do is make this employee edit view model class inherit from employee create view model class. Through inheritance, employee create view model is already providing us these four properties name, email, department, and photo. In addition, we need a property for ID and existing photo path. This is going to be of type string. And let's name the property existing photo path. The next thing that we want to do is within the edit action in our home controller, we have to write code to retrieve existing employee details and display as you can see right here. To retrieve employee details, we need the ID of the employee. The ID is passed in the URL. So on our edit action method, I'm going to include a parameter named ID. This parameter will automatically receive the employee ID from the URL through model binding. Once we have the ID of the employee within the method, let's create a variable of type employee. Let's call it employee. We are going to use this injected I employee repository service to retrieve the employee details from the database. We have get employee method to this. Let's pass the incoming ID. Next, let's create an instance of our employee edit view model and populate its properties with the data that we have in this employee object. Let's call the instance employee edit view model. ID equals employee dot ID. Name equals employee dot name. Email equals employee dot email. Department equals employee dot department. And finally, existing photo path equals employee dot photo path. At this point, we have retrieved the existing employee details from the underlying database table and then created our view model object, populated it with the data our view needs. So let's pass this view model object to this view function. At this point, if we reload this page, slash home, slash edit, slash one, we get a different error. The view edit was not found. This makes sense because we don't have this edit file edit.cshtml. So let's add a new view to the home folder. Home folder because the name of the controller is home. Let's name the view edit. The code in this view is going to be very similar to what we already have in our create view. So let's make a copy of this and then change the bits that are required. The model for this view is employee edit view model instead of employee create view model. And then the title is edit employee. Now, when we post this form back to the server by clicking this update button, we want the edit action within our home controller to handle that post request. So let's change the name of the action method here from create to edit. Next, I'm going to include a hidden input field to store the ID of the employee that we are editing. We are using a hidden field because we do not want to display the ID to the user on the view. To get the employee ID value from the ID property of this view model object employee edit view model into this hidden input field, use ASP-4 tag helper and bind it to the ID property. Along the same lines, I'm going to use another hidden input field to store the existing photo path property value. Next, we have bootstrap form group row. Within that, we have a label that displays the text name and then an input element that displays the name property value and then a span element that displays any validation errors related to the name property. The same is true for email. We have a label, an input element and a span element. The same is true even for department. And then we have a field so the user can upload a new photo. Remember, on our edit view, we want to include this photo field so the user can upload a new photo if they want to change their existing photo. And we want the text on this input field to be click here to change photo. At the moment, the text is choose file. Let's change this to click here to change photo. Next, 
we have validation summary which displays the summary of all validation errors and then we have the create button we want the text on this button to be update we also want cancel button so let me include an anchor element the text on this is cancel when this anchor element is clicked we want to redirect the user to the index action of our home controller so the user can see the list of all employees to specify the name of the controller let's use asp controller tag helper and then to specify the name of the action method let's use asp action and we want to style this as a button so let's use bootstrap btn and btn primary classes let me bring this to the next line so we could see the complete code this piece of jquery code here is used to display the name of the selected file in the file upload control we discussed this code in detail in our previous video so i'm not going to go over it again let's save our changes and take a look at the browser notice now when we reload this page we see the details of the existing employee all the controls are populated including the department notice we have the complete list of options from the list we have it selected how is this possible well it's because of this asp for tag helper the only thing that's missing at the moment is the existing employee photo let's display that now we want to display the existing photo of the employee just below the photo field so let's include an image element remember an employee may or may not have a photo if they don't have a photo then we want to display this no image dot jpg from the images folder if they do have a photo then we want to display that respective photo so we want to set the source attribute of the image element dynamically we already have an expression that computes the photo path in our details view so let's copy it from there On our model object, the property name is existing photo path. With this expression, we are basically saying if there is an existing photo path, then use that from the images folder. Otherwise, use this no image dot jpg from the images folder. So let's use this variable as the source for our image element. For styling, I'm going to use image thumbnail class. This class is present in site.css file. It basically sets height to 200 pixels and width to auto. On the image element, I am also going to use ASP append version tag helper for cache busting. To position this image element correctly on the form, I'm going to wrap it with another div element. Notice we have four classes, all these are the bootstrap styling classes. Let's close the div element. Notice now when we reload the page, we see the existing photo as well. When I click the cancel button, I am redirected to the list view where I see the full list of employees. When I click edit on any of the employees, we see that respective employee details along with their existing photo. Now, if I want to change my photo, I click the browse button and then select the photo I want to update with and at this point when I click update button we get a 404 error that's because at the moment within our home controller we don't have an edit action method that handles HTTP POST request we'll implement that in our next video three simple steps to implement edit view in ASP.NET Core MVC first create edit view model class this class carries all the data your view needs next within the respective controller class implement edit action method that responds to http get request this method retrieves the data from the underlying database creates an instance of the view model class populates it with the data that is retrieved from the database and then passes that model object to the view finally implement the view itself that displays the data provided to it by the controller action method that's it in this video thank you for listening